So, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Marco Berrocal. I am from uh, Costa Rica. Um, a little bit about this. I've been doing this uh, for 12 years. Uh, it feels long sometimes, sometimes short. It depends on the day and, and, and who asks. Um, I have to say it's been quite the ride in the sense that I never imagined myself uh, you know, getting so much out of the WordPress uh, community, uh, being a WordPress developer, and uh, when I started, I mean, we all have a point of, of entry of, of how we uh, started to do things. Uh, my uh, situation uh, was I was, uh, I lost my job and I said, uh, I really like web design. I used to sort of lead uh, projects and I really, really liked it. So I started to investigate about which content management to use. Back then, it was a matter of Joomla, Drupal, and, and WordPress. WordPress wasn't as big as it was today. So, you know, I started to do uh, themes. I started to grab a theme, start editing the theme. And, uh, you know, I said to myself, I love this uh, HTML and CSF stuff. I did things. It worked. And I was like, whoa, you know, this is amazing. I really liked it. But then I needed to uh, do stuff, you know? I needed to do stuff uh, with WordPress. You know, the theme that I had uh, didn't fit the requirements of the project, or I wanted to add a new feature, or I wanted to do things out of the box, uh, so to speak. So I started to Google a lot. I started to, uh, you know, pay stuff, and yeah, it worked. And sometimes it didn't, but eventually it did. So that was my workflow for, for many, many uh, years. Okay, and one of the things that I was really, uh, that I read everywhere, was that you don't modify core. Like, whatever you do, don't modify uh, core. And whenever I read tutorials online, they never mentioned anything about core. They just said, you know, just copy, paste this, put this on your functions, and uh, you should be good to go. And that worked, for the most part. So, this is also, um, 12 years later, a question I ask a lot when I have to give, in, like, I have to interview somebody and I ask them, you know, can you name me what hooks are and uh, what does a filter do and what does an action do? And this is, to me, a defining moment because in my uh, WordPress development career, I think it's one of those things that you need to fully understand in order to become an even better uh, WordPress developer. And part of the reasons why I am uh, decided to do this workshop is because, like I said, you know, I spent many years pasting stuff without really knowing what I was doing behind the scenes. And um, some people get it right when I interview them. Others do not. Others have left when I do the interviews. And uh, it's, it's, it's a turning point, in my opinion. There are many, many uh, aspects of WordPress development that are defining, and I think uh, hooks is uh, one of them. So I did this slide because um, when I asked my girlfriend, uh, you know, I'm going to do a workshop and I'm going to do it on hooks. And she was like, what are hooks? So I gave her the analogy of a car. Uh, whenever you request a page, you are essentially building a car. And the car goes from one phase to the next, okay? And in each phase, uh, it does things. Okay, and hooks are a way that you can modify the car without modifying the machinery itself, like modifying the core machines themselves, and that you can add extras to your car or remove them without touching the machine itself. Like you have this little thing that does the job and it does it without touching the machine. And then she said, ah, okay, and I said, exactly, ah. So, this is what this workshop is going to be about. Um, we are going to um, build something. We're going to do stuff from scratch. Um, I'm going to leave this repo here. Um, I have really no preference as to whether you should uh, type along with me or if you just want to look and follow along. Each approach is valid. I promise you by the end of this uh, workshop, there will be code in this repo. We're going to push it. And you guys can just pull it and uh, you know uh, work your way uh, from that. Mm, what else? So, going back to well, let me um, 
pause this a little bit so that everybody got it. Everybody got it? Okay, cool. It's empty right now because we're going to do this in the workshop. So um, one of the things that this design does, it's called an event-driven design. Um, I'm sure most of you have worked with this with uh, JavaScript, for example. So if I was to go and um, one of the things I didn't mention, I have a small theme. Like I said, in the record sites, nothing major. It can be any theme, um, no specific layout, nothing out of the box, just a local host, and, and that's that. So we're going to work with that. If you have that on your computer, great. And um, one of the things that um, we've worked on in the past is JavaScript, right? So we have, for example, um, let's say we want to do a script. We're going to do inline script over here. This is not part of the repo. It's just an example. So um, our camp, I think it's Athens. We'll see in a bit. Let me see if I have the selector right. Um, I'm going blind as we, as I get older. It does say work camp Athens, does it? Yeah, it does. So, Mistake, uh, cannot of no art event listener. Um, click, let's see. Uh, I did a mistake, right? Eh? Uh, let me see. Document, add the button, button. Yeah, all right. What's wrong? My JavaScript is not so good. It's just that I can't see my source code. Hold on. He prevent the phone to come from our clip. Let me see. Oh, that's a shame. Well, let me just copy what I had. That did work. Maybe it's just that I'm a little nervous. Uh, I'm going fast. It's because it's my code. Don't worry. Uh, I have it here. So, well, that kind of sucks, does it? <laughs> well, the thing is, I wanted to do an event listener, but maybe it's just a little nervous. But the thing is, in JavaScript, we've used this a lot. Like, we've used uh, an event. Uh, application where the user is the one that interacts with it and events are fired based on that. So with WordPress, it's also the same. And I go back to this car analogy. It's because WordPress, as you request a page, it starts sequentially to load things, to, for example, load themes, to load plugins, connect to the database, uh, um, load the body content, load the authors, uh, load the categories. Those things are run in a sequential order until the page is fully served and WordPress shuts down. So the idea of hooks is that you can actually go into that specific moment in within the page uh, sequence 
of things and you can tap into it and you can override the behavior. So that is essentially what a hook is. It's your ability to go to that present moment and override behavior because that is exactly what we are interested in. And this is exactly the reason why uh, all this copying and pasting stuff was so good because we were copying stuff, we were basically copying hooks that were overriding the behavior of WordPress based on what we need. So what examples could I list? I could list, for example, that we wanted to modify the body class of, 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 of the page, or we wanted to modify, I don't know, uh, the content. We wanted to modify the title. We wanted to, for example, if I am on the blog page, I load 10 posts, but if I am on category X, I want to load 20 posts. So those things are all things that you can actually uh, modify or that you can modify using hooks. And this is why, this is one of the reasons why I really, really love WordPress as a platform. It's because it has the ability for you to override behavior without touching the core files. And you can do pretty much anything you can think of without doing so. And that's part of, of, of its magic, okay? So um, in WordPress, it's slightly different than JavaScript because we're the ones that are interacting in JavaScript. The user is like a mouse up, uh, hover, mouse uh, down, or whatever, mouse click. But in WordPress, like I said, it's it's the server that assembles this. Like it's it's the WordPress engine that's itself that fires these sequences that we can tap onto and modify its behavior. So, like I said. Hooks are pretty much that. You hook into them and you use a callback function in order to override behavior. This is how we do not modify core. So part of the interview questions, when I ask what hooks are, they come in two flavors. They come in filters and in actions. So actions allow you to add, remove, or modify functionality. The key word here is functionality. So when I said, for example, I want to modify, um, I want to modify, um, what do I want to modify? <laughs> I want to add a menu page, for example, to the WordPress uh, admin. I am modifying. I'm modifying functionality. But if I want filters, on the other hand, they allow you to add, remove, or modify data. So that is the key difference between the two. So. What do I mean by data? The content, the title, an author, things that are strictly related to data. So filters are your way of modifying that data, whereas actions are the way that you can modify functionality. So always keep this in mind whenever you get an interview question like that <laughs> and uh, you know whenever you need to do something with WordPress, okay? So, uh, we're going to get started, and we're going to use the classical example of a, uh, you know, um, custom post type. We're going to create a custom post type, and I am going to explain step by step uh, how we do it with um, actions. So let's go. Uh, yeah, we can. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I am going into my plugin over here. I have this plugin file. I'm just going to. Yeah, we're going to modify that, and we are going to, I am just going to copy that from the code that I have, because I came prepared. <laughs> um, so in here, this is a plugin, nothing standard. We go to our, our website over here, we go to plugins. And we do not see it. <laughs> huh? Why am I not seeing it? Huh. Maybe I'm in the wrong directory. The content themes plugin. Let's see. Oh. I'm sorry? Huh? Yeah, it is there. I know. This is why I'm a little uh, <laughs> surprised it's not. Huh? Oh, my, my God. I'm not even on. 
I'm not even on alcohol. What's wrong with me? <laughs> so it is there. <laughs> so we activate it. My God, I was like, it's not there. <laughs> so we activate it. Nothing really happens. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so nothing really happens. So we are going to um, do, for example, a menu page. Okay. So we are. Okay, but first of all, I want to show you um, some examples, okay? So we are going to use the functions first to show you some quick examples of filters in action and uh, actions. So we are going to do is we're going to first do an action and an action. Callback is going to be WC E WC E U uh, menu C P so function and I am going to copy this. Uh, Sorry. Okay. And I am going to like that. So I just added a small action. This action is called uh, the admin menu. So actions are called by this uh, key, uh, this uh, function call over here, and. Um, you specify what the action is going to be. That is the first. Uh, that is the first argument that goes in here. So, in this case, it's admin menu. Now, you may ask, how do I know this? Well, the th I know this because I've usually have uh, worked with a lot of uh, instances of this. But there's a tons of of of. Um, of actions and uh, filters that you can actually hook on. So there's a list of that in the WordPress.org uh, website. So in this case, the time that I am hooking into is when the admin menu loads, okay? The second argument is the callback function, which is this one over here. I missed the C. And uh, there's two more arguments that I am going to discuss in a little while. So basically, this reads, when you are loading your admin menu, execute this function, which is this function that I have over here. In this case, what this function does is that it adds a submenu page to our settings file. So if I go to my website over here that I can't see, where is it? Where's my Firefox? Oh, it's this one, Jesus. <laughs> so if I go over here, go to settings, I should have this. Now, if I click on this, I should have an error. And the reason why I have an error is because one of the arguments of uh, this function over here is the callback, which I have not done. So it, it's going to fail. So the callback function is what needs to execute after I add the submenu page. I mean, I, I can do it, but uh, you know, I don't know how long we're gonna take. But again, to iterate, add action, when do we want to hook into this action? What is our callback? And two more parameters that I'm leaving out for now. There's uh, one here and there's another one here. I am leaving them out for now. I'm going to explain them in a bit. So in here, I'm, like I said, modifying functionality. I am adding a menu page to our settings menu in the WordPress dashboard. So that is functionality that I'm modifying. And uh, that's that. So the error, will leave it like that. Filters, on the other hand, work with the add filter uh, word. Again, we specify when do we want to, mo uh, what filter do we want to use? So let's say, for example, I want to um, add a special class to my body tag when I'm loading the front page only, because sometimes in CSS you need that. Like, let's say you need a special class in your, in your CSS uh, in order to target that specifically for the homepage and or any other page that you can think of, like a blog or archive, author, it doesn't really matter. So in this uh, case, 
we are going to use the filter called body class. And again, we are going to specify the uh, callback function. So WC EU body, um, body class. Okay, we're gonna do that. And we are now going to write that function. So, two things. Uh, as you may have noticed, there's a parameter in here. And the second, uh, the second is that I am returning something, which is another of the key differences between uh, filters and actions. Filters always take parameters and always need to return something. Because think about it, you are getting data that you may or may not modify, but you need to return it. So don't say in an interview, oh, filters are things that filter and actions are things that act. Don't ever say that. <laughs> the right answer is, you know, actions are things that can allow you to modify behavior, whereas filters, I can modify data. So in here, we are going to modify the uh, class, the class that uh, WordPress uses uh, to inject the body element, okay? So, if is front page, so if this is the front page, I want, I'm gonna write classes because it's plural really. Classes, classes, uh, Classes, classes. So essentially I'm saying if this is the front page, add to the classes uh, array in this instance, uh, the string Athens baby. So if we go over here, and refresh our page, aside from this error that I don't, I wanna get rid of. Uh, uh, why am I, why it keeps doing that, I don't know. So, if I refresh over here, go to the body class, I can't see it because I can't see it. It's not there, right? No. That's not nice. <laughs> huh? I'm sorry? Where? Dot I'm sorry? Oh, right, right, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Didn't see that. So, and the body class. That's not the front page, is it? No, Jesus, what's wrong with me? <laughs> and here we are. So here we are. We have the class injected, and that's what filters essentially do. They grab, in this situation, this particular situation, I have uh, asked for the body class filter. I'm asking if it's the front page, and if so, modify it so that you can add the class Athens uh, baby to it. And again, that, that's, that's the difference between uh, classes and filters. So we are going to go back into our plugin over here, which is activated and I didn't see. And now we are going to add an action. Add action, in this case, it's going to be init. And in this case, we are going to add a callback function to it, which is WCU2023 register post type, okay? So we are now, um, wait, Jesus, uh, <laughs> like that. And we are going to add the function that is called this. So again, add action. Uh, I'm hooking now into the init hook, 
and I'm using this as my callback function, okay? So in here, I am going to modify behavior. In this case, I'm going to add a custom post type. So first of all, we are going to, I'm gonna copy this just so that we can move a little bit uh, faster. My code, do, 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 do. okay. So in here, I'm using an array called session uh, labels. Uh, WordPress needs labels in order to register a post. It doesn't need it, but it's good to, to always use it. So as you can see over here, as I am going to uh, add a post type called sessions, okay? I'm gonna do that. Next up, I am going to copy and paste these arguments over here. So this is the labels, and these are the arguments for this specific post type, okay? In this case, a description, public, true, show UI, and what it supports. Next up, I need to register this post type. I'm gonna register this post type, I'm gonna name it session, and I'm gonna use the arguments that I declared here in order to do so. So let's, let's go back at it again. I'm using an action called init, where this is the callback function, so this is the function that is going to execute whenever this hook fires. And within this function, I'm defining two arrays. One is the labels array, which is needed for WordPress to identify new posts, moving it to trash, et cetera, et cetera. And the second is the arguments array, which is the array that it's going to need for this particular function called register post type. So register post type is the one that actually does, you know, create and register the actual post type using the slug over here which and the arguments. I usually add this because sometimes I've noticed that it really depends on which environment and which circumstances. I get 404s a lot uh, when, when I register a post type. So I usually you can fix that by going to permalinks and then saving them so you can flush your uh, rewrite rules. But I just add it here explicitly so that I, I, I don't have to uh, worry about that. So I'm gonna save this. And now when I refresh, you have the sessions post type over here. So this is essentially how hooks uh, operate. Um, so um, that is that, and now, let me see. Now, okay. One of the cool things that also comes uh, with WordPress is that you can create your own. So you can use your own actions in order to do your own behavior. And that is also a very and neat thing that WordPress offers. The same can be said about filters. You can create your own filters that uh, they do their own thing. So if we go, for example, to WordPress list of actions. List of actions, WordPress. So let's say, for example, we're gonna to go to this page over here. So these are pretty much all the actions that WordPress offers, and uh, like my previous uh, colleague said here when she was speaking, yeah, she doesn't know all the commands, and neither do I, I don't know all the actions, but I usually search for something specific, and usually my searches are geared towards that, like uh, admin menu hook, or, um, after theme loads hook. So I usually visualize myself, where do I need to modify this behavior? And I look for the corresponding hook based on that. Because yeah, let's, 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 let's be honest, I'm not gonna learn this and I don't, if anybody knows this, I would be very, very surprised. So this is the list of, of, of hooks. And going back to my example that of, of you can create your own, yeah, if, if, if one of these hooks is not good for you and you're saying, man, I need to do something you know, um, custom, you can create your very own. Um, usually, um, I create my own, again, when there's certain functionality that I need to execute throughout either the theme or the plugin itself. So I have the action to 
you know, do that. So I add the action at a specific point in my theme and plugin. And then, you know, if I need to override it, I'll just add an override function to it. But uh, that's essentially uh, what it is. And we're going to do that, of course. So we're going to refine uh, our previous example. Because if you look at our previous example over here, if you look at this, this is all good, but it's not very flexible, right? It's only uh, limited to sessions. It's only You can only do sessions with this. You can't, um, let's say, for example, I want to use this uh, in my workflow in order to create custom post types for the specific project, okay? So let's say I have a project where I am, as a developer, I say, okay, we're going to need sessions as a post type. We're going to need speakers. We're going to need, uh, I don't know, attendees. Uh, things like that. So this is not very flexible unless I copy and paste this three times and did it, you know, uh, three separate times. So I could, for example, create a custom action where I can define the parameters for it and it's going to execute this function and create the post types for me. I don't know if, if, if what I said uh, makes sense. Yeah, it does? Yeah, okay, cool. So we're going to do exactly that. Um, So, we are going to go and we are going to create a function. Okay, but I don't know if I should do this first or I should deviate and show you a couple of uh, actions that um, I created. Hmm. Are you guys following or you guys would like me to create a basic example? Well, what's the consensus here? Hmm? My question is, do you want me to go straight into the post type and do it, or do you want me to create a custom action so that you can see it display here and you can see it and I speak a little bit about it? What do you guys prefer? You guys are the bosses. Okay, so we are going to create some custom actions, okay? So function called WCEU2023 custom action, do action, I'm going to write and then I'm going to walk uh, through it. Okay? So, da -da 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 And uh -huh. da -da -da -da. Okay. So, we create custom actions by using the word do action and within the parentheses we use the name of that custom action that we want to use, okay? That's how we register that. And below, I am doing exactly the same as I have done previously but using WordPress uh, list of actions. But now, I am using my own action. And this is how I can override the behavior of this action whenever it is that I need it throughout the theme. So I could do like this, echo. This is another thing in action. This is another thing in action. Okay. So, let's see if I have it over here. Let me see, because sometimes, no, I need to add one more thing. You need to run something. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move this, actually, because this, is not, this should not be part of the, 
of the uh, custom post type stuff that I wanted to do. So I'm going to move this into functions and just put it there like that. I'm going to create uh, two, okay? I'm going to create two. This, of course, will not work. That, and let's say I want to go all the way down here and go like this. And, okay, uh, let me see. I have an error. Uh, header callback. I did not add the callback, did I? No, I did not. But of course I didn't. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let me walk you through it. So I've added the custom action called uh, W WordCamp Europe 23 custom action. I'm declaring it here in my functions file and I'm using this as the callback. Uh, this only echoes, this is another thing in action. Inside my header file, I am using the same action, different callback, but here I put two numbers, okay? And the callback, it's this function over here where I say overriding is fun. So if we go over here, you'll see that they are printed out uh, without the space, I'm sorry. Well, maybe we should do like this. Overriding is fun, okay? So I've created my custom action that only prints two things. Here comes the nice part. So the 10, I don't know why I did that. I should not have done a 10. What am I doing? <laughs> um, the, the 10 is called the priority. So the number is the, the priority. Or wait, is it the arguments first or the priority? Correct me if I'm wrong. Priority. priority, right? Okay. So the 10 is the priority. In WordPress, the higher the number, the lower priority it gets. Okay, so the default, I think it's 10. I'm not sure if it was 10 or 20, I forgot. But it's one of those two. Um, if I use a number that is lower, like for example, one, this action over here doesn't have a uh, number. So it's gonna use the default one. But since I specified a number that is very low, this is going to run first as you can see. So overriding is fun. This is a thing in action. So always keep that in mind when you are developing. Um, how, yes? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I just wanted to know if you need more and more things that are a higher priority, where do you go from there? There's a lot of philosophical debates like the ancient old Greeks as to how high or low that number should go. Because I have seen people use negative numbers, which some say, how can you do that to your code? You are the worst person in the world, where there are other people that say, in the WordPress documentation, it says integers, and that is an integer. So it's a, again, this is, uh, now that we are in Greece here, we can go to empirism versus, uh, what should we call it? What's the other one, uh, the other current, where they, you know, Plato and Socrates, they, they, they all fought over it. Uh, okay, that, um, Knowledge is to be obtained, whereas others say you are born with it. So a lot of philosophical debates around that. So personally, and I'm sorry for those who don't agree, 
I use the negative low numbers as an emergency only because sometimes when you're working, everything is a priority. And I'll tell you in the place that I work, uh, yeah, this needs to load really fast. Yeah, this needs to load really fast. Oh, yeah, this needs to load really fast. So before you know, everything lo needs to load really fast. And you as a developer are like, man, what should I do? I mean, I only have 10 numbers, you know? So um, recently, uh, yeah, I had to resort to a negative number as far as the priority was concerned. But try to avoid it if you can. If, 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 if possible, you know, try not to go that route. And, uh, you know... Um, yeah, that's 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 really my my, my take on it. So do, you not bring, do you not use a number that's higher than ten? You so could, you that. could, but the thing is, if you do, the priority is lower. So, if for example, I use um, where am I? You just said I've only got ten numbers. So I've got well, that's when I want to go the other way, the higher priority, because if you use a l higher number, it's lower. It's I know it's I know it's it's a little twisted the whole WordPress way of things but like for example nine. nine I could use nine and I could use here uh, 10 so in the WordPress and let me put this side by side in the WordPress uh, way of things In the WordPress way of things, the one on the right gets executed before the one on the left. So the things that you need to execute before is limited because it's only 10 numbers before the other camp of people start saying you're a terrible person because you're using negative numbers. So if you can, use a high number. If you, if you, don't, if you don't rely on other um, hooks to load if you know before yours, okay. This only is all, uh, viable is also uh, whenever there's a conflict of, of, of things like one is overriding the other, correct? So if what you are doing is is has a lower priority and there's something else that does something similar, you may have overwritten behavior because of this priority number. Okay. Yes. It's not the best practice, but I, I, I'm just trying to no. give an example so that people... It's not a good practice. It's not a good practice. No, I have, to, I have to be honest. It is not. But it's just an example so that people can actually see it in different files, so to speak. Yeah. Yes? Uh, what if the query is similar? How does WordPress execute a connection or another? So if they're like both... The same number? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. That's a good question, you know? I don't have the answer to that. What if they have the same? I think it's because of the, yeah, yeah because they, no, but there's also there's an there's an um, there's an um, there's an object that WordPress uses that has the list of all the you know things that it needs to load, and I think it's sorted depending on that uh, that sort. It's it 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 gets executed. I'm not a hundred percent sure that that is the problem, but that's a really good question. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, like my colleague said, this is not best practice. Like, if I go, for example, uh, over here and go to the footer and do that and then do another action, uh, for example, add action, I'm going to use the same, add action, um, what's the name of it? Okay. And I am going to use... Uh, um, Let me do this again so that it's better footer CB. Function. Uh, uh, echo inside the footer. And we are going to give this a priority of one. So 
here, once again, using another action to override one more time the hook, but I'm just printing things out. And if I go over here, it's not working because, it's strange. Okay, here we are. So, there we go. But now I modified that. So, again, now I have three priorities. I have one here, I have nine, and I have the default 10. So, in the WordPress way of looking at things, again, we're gonna look at it. We have one over here, we have nine, and we have 10. So, all using the same custom action. So, in the WordPress way of things, the one in the footer gets executed first, then the header, then the functions. So, this is another, th another thing in action, is the last. Overriding fun is the middle, and inside the footer is going to be the first. And let's refresh that, and that is exactly how it executes. So always keep that in mind. Priority is always important, especially in large projects where you have a lot of things uh, going on. So going back to our custom post type, we have that, Again, I wanted to modify this and I wanted to do something that is more flexible, right? I wanted to do something that allows me to create multiple custom post types using uh, this function. So it's gonna be like this factory of creating uh, post types. So, what we're gonna do is we are we're going to create, we're gonna modify this, and we're gonna modify the hook for in it. And we are gonna create our own, like this. I hope I don't get confused with the names. And we are going to specify the priority. And now I'm gonna put a number here. This number is called the number of arguments this uh, action is going to need. So in this case, I'm specifying four, okay? So you may be wondering, uh, what about the rest of the hooks, like uh, the WordPress hooks? What's the number on that one? Uh, it really depends on the hook that you're working on because this, uh, for example, this, for example, may have a different number of arguments compared to, uh, for example, this. So if, you, if you're curious about it, you have to look for the specific hook in question in order to know what the default arguments is going to be. So, but in our situation, we are going to need four. Now, why am I gonna need four? Because if I look at this, I want, to mod, I want to dynamically add this here. I want to use plural and I want to use singular. Okay, so that's two arguments. And I want to use a description because that's gonna be different from depending on what post type I'm using. And the third is the, sl uh, the fourth is the slug. So whenever I'm going to execute my custom action, I'm gonna need those four arguments in order for this to run and create my uh, custom post type. So, mm -hmm. I am going to define them here. Not surprisingly, I'm going to name them singular, plural, slug, and description. Okay, yeah. Okay, so in sessions, I'm gonna get rid of it. Sessions, do, 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 do. 
and oh man, I'm gonna have to do this by hand. Um, uh, singular. Singular. This is going to be singular also. Uh, singular. And, uh -huh. This is going to be plural. So what I'm doing here is just adding the variables that I'm going to pass along for my custom action in order to create a custom post type of any type that I want. So it's going to be plural. This is also this loss of plural. And this is also plural. And this is also plural. I'm doing it, no. And plural. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to rename this array because now it's not going to be limited to sessions. Uh, it's going to be custom post labels. That looks better. This one as well. I'm going to modify this because it's not limited to sessions anymore. Custom arts. And I am going to limit this in here. I'm going to get rid of this because I said I was going to use the description for it. Right? And what happened to my mouse? So instead of hard coding it, I'm going to use it like that. So description looks good. And session is no longer my slug. Now it's going to be dynamically added using my action. So slug is good. Let me see. Yes? Where? 24. Yes, singular. Singular. Thank you. Which one? This one? Ah, uh, right, right, it doesn't. No, no, what's wrong with me? No, no, it doesn't. Right. I have to define that when I add the action. I'm sorry about that, that I got carried away. So when I add the action, I define the priority and the number of arguments. In the do action, I do not do that. Thank you very much. I did not see that. So, again, we are going to register the post type with flush. And now, we are going to add action. What's our name of our action? Um, it's this one. And our callback now is going to be session post. Uh, function is going to be this. Da, 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 da. And uh, okay. And now What's the order? Singular session sessions slug session session description. Uh, let me see. Hope no errors. No errors. Okay. So uh, explaining this. 
will be like this, okay? Do action, again, we are defining our custom action called uh, register custom post type. So whenever we call that, we are going to create like a factory. Uh, my, my idea is to create a factory of custom post types that I want to use. So I modified this function so that the parameters are going to be inserted both in the labels and in the arguments, okay? And again, I register the post type using the dynamic name now that I'm going to use, that I'm going to pass as a parameter and I'm just gonna flush the rewrite rules. And now, below, I'm act using the hook of my custom action, which is this one over here, register custom post type, which is this one, right? It's this one. And the callback function, as we've previously seen, is this one, which is the function below, where I just make the call using the parameters that I want to use. So if I want to use speakers, for example, I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste this, and now I'm gonna use speaker. Speaker post, speaker post, speaker, speakers, speakers, speaker description. And if I go over here, I have the speakers here below. So by using these custom actions that I've created, I can now go ahead and create multiple post types just by calling this custom action that I've created. Now, this may or may not be a very practical example of, of creating post types because you could do an object or something else or you know, just a function and call it and that's that. But what I really wanted to highlight was the emphasis of using your own actions in order to override behavior and do your own thing. Um, you could, for example, I don't know, you could argue that, okay, if I have, I don't know, if I have, this is, this is not a real case scenario, if I have 2,000 attendees, okay, then we are going to do a conference, so let's add the speakers. So you just, you add the speakers like that because you need a different behavior compared to this one. Now, you could again argue, say, oh man, I, I could put that all in a function, right? Yes, you could. But this is just another approach, another different way of doing things. And I think that is the key uh, thing about using a platform such as uh, WordPress. Uh, I always, when I tell people um, of WordPress, it's like it's, when it comes to development, it, it's, you know, all, all these things are just one blade in the giant knife, that the Swiss army knife that is WordPress. So it's just one more tool for you to say, ah, I'm going to create my actions or ah, I'm going to use a class or you know things like that that allow you to have flexibility when it comes to doing your own uh, things. So again, we could do this copy, paste over here, and now we wanna do attendees. Yeah. Attendees. Attendee. Attendees. Attendee. Attendee description. And I refresh that, and I have my custom post type called attendee. So. Again, that's the, I like to say magic. I know you guys might relate to that. Others do not. <laughs> but that's one of the things that I, I absolutely love. May I ask something? Yes, of course. Uh, when you do action, uh, you said about the arguments. Yes. But uh, we removed it completely. Correct. And uh, do, do it means uh, you need to specify it for some, what's the reason to specify? The arguments? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Uh, if we specify, what's the difference? Uh, you're being ex so you're being explicit about it in order to follow a convention and. Uh, we still pass the correct. The correct. Okay. So it's gonna throw an error somewhere. No, that, as far as I know, no. But that's why I was kind of stuck. I was like, man, I was like, 
I thought in the do action I needed to specify the number of parameters that I wanted to take, you know? That's why I was a little bit skating. And it's funny because uh, now that you mentioned that, because I think that when I ran the code, it actually worked. Uh, let's, 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 as the previous uh, uh, speaker said, let's break things. Uh, because she, uh, I, when I was preparing for this, I did this, you know, I did this. And it still worked, you know? I was like, yeah, you see? I was like, what? When you said that, I was like, what? And so I was like, and then I, and then I said to myself, I'm gonna fly without uh, you know, questioning, and I'm gonna just do it, and it worked. And I was like, why does it work, you know? <laughs> it's like that meme, I have no idea why my code works, and I, I know why my code works. <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, we just need to see the, the function, how it interprets. You want to see an example of, of, of the, uh, using the arguments? Uh, no, no, I mean to see why it's not breaking. We need to look the function to see how it's implemented. That part I, I, I don't quite get. I'm sorry? Uh, okay, okay, yes. You mean going back to the core and seeing? Yes, yes. but n here I'm defining my own. So I'm kind of uh, yeah, stuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, but if you if you yeah if you if you want to look at the arguments of a specified uh, hook, you need to look at the core uh, documentation and see how many it takes. And uh, and like I like you know like he he said, uh, I don't know why my code works, <laughs> because I, I I I was sure that I had needed to specify this here, but uh, it worked with or without. They, I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so moving forward, um, we refined it. Uh, we get again, like I said, uh, with filters, uh, they modify data, uh, not behavior. Um, we already discussed uh, priority and parameters. Um, here, um, I'm going to just mention briefly uh, some of these uh, functions that uh, WordPress has that may be useful when when it comes to. Uh, um, you know, doing things. So you have has action and uh, has filter. So they basically check to see if this action or filter has been registered. This is uh, good if you need to make your, or if you need an action to be present within the WordPress uh, sequential, uh, you know, within the WordPress sequence of things in order to execute some code. Because you may create a, uh, uh, a hook that is not going to run because it, you know, it doesn't exist or something is not valid. So this is pretty good, uh, you know, pro uh, validation in order to run your code uh, against that. Um, I could have run it, but uh, I, I don't think how much time we have. Uh, we're okay. And um, remove action and remove filters. Uh, these are really, I, I, I like to use them because uh, sometimes WordPress uh, loads uh, things that I really don't want. Um, like for example, um, like for example, let me give you a full example. Um, like for example, and I hope uh, Matt doesn't see this, but uh, we're gonna use this example. <laughs> Um, one of the one of the things I don't like much about WordPress is that whenever you search for WordPress in your uh, source code, you always see the version. I, I'm, I'm not really sure why we need that. And it, it can potentially be a security, uh, you know, vulnerability because you're pretty much saying this is the version that I have, and if you're working on a site that's a little old or it has a vulnerability, you know, people can exploit that. So usually within my workflow, I just remove it altogether, and you use a, a precisely a filter to do that. So the filter would be. Um, remove, uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm sorry, it's, it's, a, it's an action. Remove action, WP head, and we specify the uh, 
thing that we want to remove, gener generator. Yeah, I got it. So if I execute this, now it's gone. Um, I have to say, so though, uh, in the documentation it says that you need to run this within an action, but uh, I kind of ran it within my functions file. So I'm not really sure what it meant, uh, because as it uh, said in the documentation, you needed to, you know, uh, hook into an action, and in the callback, execute line 695, which I really said to myself, okay, why does it say that if this works? I don't know if what I said made sense. Did it? No? Yes? If it doesn't, I'll, I'll say it again. <laughs> okay. So in the WordPress documentation, it spl explicitly said not to run this directly as I did in line 695. And instead, it told me to do this at action some hook. This is not a real hook, by the way. Some callback in the WordPress documentation it's suggesting or it's pretty much saying that I should do this instead of what I just did. Why, I, I really don't know, but I just wanted to tell you guys about it in case the code doesn't really work as expected whenever you are removing actions. Chances are you need to execute it in this manner, like, you know, hook into it and then call the function, the call the remove action in order to do so. But, you know, when I, when I ran it, it just worked and I was like, okay, you know, that's, that's 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 really fine. That's really great. It works as expected. Um, oh, uh, yes. Sorry. So on the remove action, can you also specify how back and do whatever you want? No, no, no. So does that look difficult? Control Z to you? Control Z or Command Shift Z? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Cor correct, 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 yes. Um, since I, uh, we still have time, um, I wanna do other filters, like other filters that uh, I found, I find it interesting because of the workflow of, of, of things. And one of the things, like for example, uh, let me scroll, so that, uh, let me see, this is my code. Uh, okay. I really, when I work with projects, and you all agree with me, clients will be clients, always. <laughs> clients will be clients, always. And one of the things I like is, I like to limit some of their choices so that clients don't do what clients do. And uh, one of those things, for example, is, um, for example, this. If I uncheck this, this might open the spam, you know, gates, and a lot of people, you know, are going to, the comments are just going to go straight into, you know, to your, uh, to your post. And uh, that's, that's a little, that we definitely do not want that. And another thing I don't, and I've seen it because clients are clients, is that they check this, uh, the reading, this one. And then they're like, why is my SEO not working? You did my project. And, uh, and then you log in and you see that. And you're like, man, but I didn't click on it. And it's like, I sure did not, you know? So it's always good to reinforce this so that, you know, uh, Clients don't modify this inadvertently and some damage could appear. So how can you do that? You do that exactly, you know, with, with, with actions and, 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 and filters. So I am interested, uh, we're gonna do, for example, let's go to discussion. Um, one of the ones that I like is, I'm gonna do the opposite. But uh, you guys will you guys will get the 
you guys will okay so we're gonna go to discussion so I always no matter what I want this checked no matter what it doesn't matter because if the client unchecks this and you have a decent site you're going to get a lot of spam and next thing you know, you'll be maintaining a database and you're doing the cleanup. Of course, you're going to charge money. But, you know, the objective here is for you to save work and not allow the client to uncheck this inadvertently. So you might be wondering, how do I do that? Well, we can use a, a hook for that. So we are going to filter that. And I am going to copy and paste this. I'm going to use the repo, even though it's not... A I'm going to use the repo. So we're going to, I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to show you two ways. Okay. We're going to use the first one. Okay. Pretend you don't see it, but you already have. <laughs> so Okay, so adding a filter. In this case, I am filtering the option of comment previously approved, which is this little guy over here. I'm specifying the comment, you know, pretty, we've seen this. And, you know, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, um, I always get this wrong. I always forget. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it out. So in case of doubt, leave it out. Uh, so this, what it does is that what it does is that this is going to return always true because no matter if I uncheck this and save it, this will always be true because I am filtering the response and I'm overriding that value. So this way I can ensure that my client, my beloved client who I have so much love and trust does this and saves it, this will always be true. So if you need some settings to be always like this, you can modify the behaviors using these uh, filters. But the cool way that I wanted to show you, because I learned this the other way, and my boss showed me, I was like, man, you know, you know a lot. So you can add the filter, and this is the same. If you look at it, it's the same filter. It's the same, yeah, it's the same filter. But the callback, it's just return true. And I was like, because I did this, and he was like, I did, I did this that I commented, and he says, this is too much. I was like, what do you mean it's too much? And yeah, it's too long, and I'm just returning true. And he says, no, but WordPress has a function called return true. I was like, no, you don't. And he says, yes, they do. So, <laughs> so I said, I doubted him. So lo and behold, lo and behold, WordPress has a function that always returns true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... You know, whenever it, this is a very simplified way, because in one line, you're pretty much executing everything. And uh, I was like, man, this is really, really nice. So uh, again, so filters are a good way for you to do that. So uh, another thing I like to have control is this. Uh, personally, I like the enabled, and I like it to be two levels deep, because the design I think from a visual perspective starts to break after, uh, you know, five uh, replies. I mean, how much do you need to reply to the reply to the reply to the reply, right? I mean, two, two levels deep is, is, is more than enough. So again, we, we, we do the same by, and I'm going to copy this and paste it by doing an add filter. In this case, the option thread common depth, uh, I'm using here a enclosure, 
instead of a callback function, which is also valid. I wanted to show you guys that because here, as you can see, I'm using, ugh, I am using the function itself within the call. I'm not using a, a callback function like this. So I, I, you may see examples of that because since this is short, it's, it's just practical to do it like that. And I'm gonna get rid of that. And in here, again, the thread comments depth, which is this value, I want it to be always two. You know, so function, option, return two. So if I change this to 10 and I save it, this is still going to be two. Uh, yes? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Is there a way to comply? My, no, my, my, my boss uh, taught me that. Uh, you inspect over here. You look for the label. And you have this. And then you put the option uh, word before. Underscore and that's it. <laughs> I was not going to say it. I was like, uh, <laughs> you know, a magician doesn't reveal its tricks, right? <laughs> but that is, that is how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> So it's pretty much the same. So, yes? You could do that. I mean, again, it's, it's options that you have that you can think about what's best for you given the project that you're working on. You know, um, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think I ha we have time for another example. Um, uh, so, one of the things uh, also I like to work is, for example, the common moderation. You can put words here, you can put words here and if you, for example, put a word, it will go automatically into common moderation. But if you think about it, why not filter the comment itself and replace you know, some bad words here and there for asterisk? So it doesn't go into moderation and you don't need to be always uh, looking out for the moderation because I mean, it's time. I mean, we got other things to do. You know, so why go into your WordPress dashboard and check that and like, ugh, why am I doing this every day, you know? So uh, a good way, a good example could be something that filters that. So we are going to now, going to add the filter. In this case, it's common text. This is pretty straightforward. It's the text of the comment. <laughs> so we are going to specify the callback function like this. And we are going to get, of course, the comment, comment, comment. And let me copy it because I think it's way, way easier to just copy that and paste it. So I'm sorry about the words. I tried to be original. <laughs> so we have these bad words over here in this array, you know. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have them in an array. We are going to, and I have this wrong, we are going to get the size of this array. In this case, it's just four elements. We're going to loop over the array, and we're going to replace the naughty words with asterisks. So that way, we avoid doing this the same, but here it goes into moderation. Here, it just replaces it. So we're going to do that. We're going to save that. And we're going to reload the page or get a comment. Where can I get a comment? Like, for example, not here. Hello, world. I'm sorry about. You know. Uh, uh. Hola, hola. So that's an easy way of, of, of doing things. And I, I think that is the, 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 the takeaway of this workshop. I mean, we've done some code, we've done some stuff, 
But what I really want for you guys to get out of this is to think about things that you can do and modify with WordPress using hooks and filters, either your own or the ones that exist and that they become a part of your workflow in order to make your lives as developers better because we're developers, we deserve a better, good life. And uh, you know, it's less of these uh, tasks that can be a little bit uh, repetitive and you can simplify things and still charge the same, which is another complaint I get. Why do you get charged the same? I was like, it's because of what I know, not the time it takes to me to do it. So uh, filters are, are that, uh, I mean, hooks are that. They're a way for you to, to, to do pretty much anything you can think of. And, and you know, when, if you have an idea of, of a plugin that you would like to use or anything like that, I mean, anything that you want to do with WordPress, it's doable using your, you know, hooks, either the ones that WordPress has, which is a huge list, or uh, your own. And um, I wanted to show this example, but I, I, I don't, I don't want to complicate things further, so I'm just going to mention it. Um, it. Remember in this example over here, and the ones that we did the custom post type, uh, we specified uh, the arguments, right? Like for example here. Um, this could be a little long if the argument list is, yeah, too long. <laughs> so uh, instead of that, we can use this do action ref array and apply filters ref array to send an array and use the values of that array in here. So that way the argument list doesn't get as long or if you need everything in an array, you can use that instead of the do action. So it's essentially substituting do action for do action ref array and sending an array as a parameter. Uh, I think I have the code, I'll, I'll paste it. Uh, you guys can, 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 can fix it uh, later on, I think. You see, you see over here, now I have the array over here, whereas here, I have the four arguments. So now I just use the arrays within and I just pass one argument around. It's just cleaner than, 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 than using uh, you know, the, the amount of, of parameters. I think four, it's at the limit, but, uh, but, but yeah. Um, where you see it over here? So this is why, I don't know, we, we need to talk later because at the, at, the, at the do action, I'm defining it here and I'm specifying the array that I'm gonna pass around as, as, as arguments. So we need to have that discussion because that, that made my head spin a little. Um, seeing them all run. Okay, I'm glad uh, we still have time. So sometimes I wanna see all the actions run on a given page. I want to see them. I want like, uh, man, what, what's, what's running uh, within this page, right? So I'm going to show you the ugly and the nice. So the ugly would be, and I'm going to copy that because I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in the plugin and then I'll comment it out. So this is the ugly. Let's paste it. I'm going to explain it. Add action. In this case, it's all. All means all. So <laughs> this is going to run on absolutely all the actions out there. So this callback function is going to run. So this callback function over here, essentially what I'm saying is that if it's not admin and you know echo the tag out. So if we have that over here and we load this, this is going to do this thing over here. I mean, it's a little big, it's a little, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not really nice. I mean, if you ask me, I mean, yeah, I see the list, so what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not something I really like, but again, if you guys wanna see it in action, I mean, this, this is the code that does that. I uh, like to use a plugin, which I have here. Um, it's this one over here, and this is why I was uh, so confused because I thought uh, it's this one over here, another show hooks. Uh, the reason I like it, it's because it, it's a fork of, wait, it's a fork of, uh, wait, let me, this is not the site. Uh, okay. 
I like it because this this is a, a fork of um, of simply show hooks, which was a uh, it, it was a plugin that does the same job, but it got discontinued over the past years. You know how it is. So these guys picked up the pro the the, um, the project again and are starting to do that. And I really like the simply show hooks uh, um, plugin because what it does is that I could be on a page. And it gives me all of this information that it's pretty, it's pretty useful. So, uh, for example, as you can see, I have these three. Um, this is the, the actual uh, action that I previously did, the one that uh, printed the information out. Wait, let me get rid of this. this. These three lines are these three that I have over here, right? You see the callback functions on each of them. And, uh, you know, no, I'm sorry. These are the custom post types. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, where are the ones that I have for? No, I need. It's on the other side, right? It's, it has to be on the public side. Yeah. And where is it? Let me do. Oh, here it is. So we have it. We have them over here. We have these are the ones that print out the inside the footer overriding blah 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 blah. And in here, you see the action, which is the action that I made. And here are the priorities that I specified previously. And as I, and as I told you before, it's from lower number to higher number. So it's a really neat plugin because you can see it, it inserts it right after each thing. And you might be saying, oh, I need something before the template loads, or I need something before the loop or after the loop runs. Uh, for example, there has to be something loop. Yeah, here, like for example, loop start. So you may say, I need to modify the behavior before the loop starts, or uh, you know anything that you can think of. And in here, it has all absolutely all the the uh, the callback functions that it has for a particular action. So I, I love this plugin to develop, or whenever I'm stuck and I need to do something as far as um, uh, you know, actions is concerned. So I just load this and see it, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to hook here, or hmm, maybe I need to do that. And it's, you know, getting those things in here going. And uh, I wanted to to share that because this is a, if you if you guys are going to venture with with hooks and whatnot, this is uh, this is uh, really useful. And um, I think. I am done. Yeah. Uh, well, some more examples uh, before I, I, I leave. Um, one of the that's part of the workflows, I would say. Uh, one of the actions I use a lot is uh, called the Q scripts. I use it a lot to inject JavaScript. You know, when I started with WordPress, I did like pretty much everybody else did. I go to the header and put my scripts in there and uh, see you later, alligator. You know, <laughs> but then as I got uh, a little bit older with this, I realized that, you know, I could use the uh, in queue script hook, uh, use the callback function, which is in this case, uh, you know, load my scripts and then just add them add them, and here comes the good part. Uh, I'm a little cheap when it comes to uh, serving assets, so if you need uh, something on the home page, why do you load it everywhere else? So you, in, you add the scripts dynamically through, the, through a, a callback function using uh, hooks. So if it's in the front page, add the script. If not, don't add it. I mean, we're, not, we're, 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 we're developers, and we need to think also a little bit about the user experience of things. You know, we, not, we don't need to load things that aren't necessary in a page. If we're not going to use them, let's just not load them. And that makes it better, and people are, are happier. So for in queuing scripts, this is great. I use it a lot in, in, in the workflow. And another thing that I use a lot is um, this one over here. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an action. Again, a modifying behavior. I'm going to paste that over here. And what a, this action is called pre-get post, and my modify main query is the callback. And what this essentially does is I modify um, you know, the main query based on the type of page that I'm in. Because you have the setting over here. You have the setting over here of, of uh, what you might call it, settings reading, and you have this, right? You have this, but this is just for the blog, 
and sometimes you need to override this on a specific page like let's say uh, let's say you have an archive page that is called news that is really good and popular and you want to have more posts visible than compared to your blog or your recipes for example so you use a hook to modify the main query and the amount of posts per page. Now, I want to say this is a bad practice. You should never use minus one because that is not good as far as performance is concerned. Uh, because, yeah, it's, 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 it's big on the database as far as, as query. So uh, I think with that, um, I am done. And I would like to thank each and every one of you, especially with the questions and the debate which is something I absolutely love, even though I get cornered. Thank you. <laughs>